Now let's go on with the third part of community diagnosis. We'll talk about community health. Now we have described basically community, what the community diagnosis is and we've also talked about the elements of a comprehensive community diagnosis. We've said community diagnosis is identifying conditions or things which are affecting the community and also to quantify them. How bad is that problem? Now, what are the sources of data which you are going to be able to use, okay, in the conduct of community diagnosis? So community diagnosis, you want to find out problems affecting the community. Where can you find out information about those problems affecting the community? So you can use primary data. Here, this, the source would be the community. When you're talking about primary data. So what you are doing is that you go on a survey or you can interview people. You can uh, have forecast group discussions uh, aiming at specific parts or specific data that you want to collect. You can also just get to observe in the community and get to write down what you have seen. You can also even have actual minutes of community meetings. When you are in a meeting, you are discussing the problems affecting the meeting. So that those actual meetings, that can be primary data. Secondary data, this is data that is going to be collected from, let's say, for example, records of the program from organizations, health center records, and also just other public records. Okay. Now, let's talk about the steps in conducting community diagnosis. What are the steps you'll be able to use for you to be able to find out some problems affecting the community? The first step is going to be planning. So one, you need first to determine the objective. Now, the, determine the objective, basically what will happen is that the health worker is going to decide what, what is the depth and what should be the scope of the data that I want to gather. How much should it cover? Okay, that is planning. So health workers are going to determine the occurrence and distribution of selected environment, socioeconomic and behavioral conditions, which are going to be important to disease prevention and wellness promotion. So some things you are looking at when you are determining the objective is you want to determine the environment, some socioeconomic and behavior conditions which are important to prevent some diseases, all right? So those are things that you want to be looking at as you get to conduct your community diagnosis. So you can use the statement of objective SMART. So you need to make sure that you are specific with the information that you want to find out. The information you want to find out should be measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound should be within a time frame, okay? Because not all information is going to be varied for long. For example, if I want to find out really about a certain disease, say I want to find out more about COVID-19, that is going to be bound to a specific period in which the condition exists or existed. And beyond that, you you will not be able to find out information about it. Let's say I want to find out about COVID-19 and then you go and start researching books which were written in 1994. You'll not be able to find out information about that because that is a condition which happened in 2020, okay? Another important thing that we need to do in planning is to define the study population. So the, as a health worker, you need to identify the population group based on the objective of the study. From the, inform from the first part, what do I want to find out? Okay, I want to find out about the occurrence of a certain disease, a social, economic. Let's say I want to find out about this, the effect of this disease on the rich. So now you define the study population. Where am I going to go? Which, which people am I going to be able to find out that information from? So that is now the third part when it comes to planning as a step of the community diagnosis is 
preparing the community. So you just don't go in the community and then you start asking people questions like that or everything. What you do is that you are going to give a cut a score for meetings, okay? So you can inform the community that you are going to be going to sensitize them about something or you basically get to inform the community leaders and the community leaders can also help with the communication. So some things that you want to look at is you can find because the importance is when you get to tell the community early, the, especially the leaders of the community, as you get to go and find out information about that community, the leaders of the community might have already some information. For example, the leaders already know the spot map of the entire community. So they can actually even help with directing you where you need to get some specific information. Also, the leaders of the community have also some initial data. As so for example, when you're talking about a, a clinic, you inform the clinic. The, the clinic has got some data that they already have. Let's say, for example, about the total number of households per area, total population per area, list of traditional healers, list of clinic health workers, and all those things. So that can actually reduce on your work because some data that you're supposed to go in the community and start counting all the people, all the households in the area, you already have it at your disposal, right? So that is the first thing. And then the other thing when it comes to planning is you now choose the methodology and instrument of community diagnosis. Okay, what would be the method and what are the instruments that you use for community diagnosis? So there are three levels of data that can be gathered here. You can gather community people. Here, what you are going to do is you are going to have house or the heads, traditions, even also non-traditional leaders that you can get to ask. So 30% of the total population of households for the survey sample spread out proportionally would be ideal. So when you are using community people, you don't go basically to, you can't go to the entire community for you to find out about a certain information. If you use 30% of the total population, that is going to be enough. At least it is going to, to be a bit giving you information about the entire community. Okay. So representation is going to increase or decrease proportionally depending on the size of the area. Let's say the area is very, very big and then you just get like the 30% of the total population giving you data. The data might not be too accurate, but if the less of the community is very small, then you get 30% of the population telling you about a certain information. It might be a bit accurate. Again, another group of people that you can ask is you can, instead of going to the entire community to ask about a certain information that you want to find out, you can actually also just go to traditional leaders. Here you just get 10% of traditional leaders, okay? Why a corresponding number of non-traditional leaders can also be obtained, meaning that 10% of traditional leaders and also 10% of non-traditional leaders. You get to ask them about the community. The data that they will give you is going to be enough of what you can be finding out about. You go to traditional leaders, they say also go to an um, area member of parliament or councillor like that. You can also go to community health workers. Okay, 20% of all enlisted community health workers as for the previous. So if you just ask like 20% of all the enlisted community health workers, let's say for the community health workers, we have got 100 of them, you ask 20 of them. The information that they'll give you about the community, I think will be enough for the data that you want to find out. So this we can include also some program staff. Okay, for this program, you have got this stuff. Let's say, for example, for medicine, you get to ask people in such a field and everything like that. Now, the other thing that you want to find out, remember, you want to choose the methodology. So the methodology, you can choose any one of these three. You can either go to the community, to the leaders, or also to the health workers. Another is now you need to determine the instruments for data collection. Are you going to use questionnaires or observation checklist or interview guide, for example, community health workers, leaders or program staff, you get to interview them. 
So instrument simplify have to be simplified to avoid overburden on the data gatherers in terms of educational preparations and time constraints. So you don't give someone, let's say, a whole book to say, go and find out about all this. You need to make sure that you simplify these instruments. If it's a questionnaire, make sure the questions just to be a bit small or, or few. And that is going to be really helpful. Okay, the other thing that you look at is the role play and interview scene to place oneself in an actual situation. You are more like playing a role. Okay, you put yourself in a situation in, in terms of an interview in order to find out about certain information. The other thing that you can that you should be able to do as you are getting to plan is setting the target. Okay, now setting the target, this one is going to involve constructing a timetable of activities, also the sample size, the number of personnel that will work. So this is going to be important. So now after you have planned, so this was all on planning. After you have planned, now you're going to be able to carry out your community diagnosis. Now you implement your planning. So in implementing, you have now your actual data gathering. So community health nurses, uh, nurses supervises the data collectors. You check also the completeness, accuracy, and re reliability of the information that you have gathered. So data gatherers should cover the following. You need to cover community dimensions secondarily related to health issues. So the data that you want to find out should talk about the comment dimensions. Now, comment dimensions really, you are using something that will be related to community dimension, not really the actual community dimension. That is what we are saying secondarily. Something that you look at is the demographic data. Okay, how is the like the landscape, the people, and everything like that, the the terrain or the place? Okay, is it hilly and things like that? You also look at the economic characteristics of the community. Is it developed, underdeveloped, also social indicators? How do people live socially, political characteristics, cultural characteristics, environmental indicators? Other things that you look at is community dimensions directly related to health. So these are not directly related to health, but they can tell you about the health system. So say, for example, you know about uh, the social organization of a community. They, just the way the community interacts will tell you about their health or let's say cultural beliefs of a community. Just the cultural beliefs of a community will tell you about their health. Okay, political characteristics. Because some, just politically, because they belong to this political party, if this other political party mentioned anything, they are going to politicize it and will not be able to get that information even if it is for their well-being. So that will affect their health. So that is not directly aff affecting their health, but indirectly. And then there are some other dimensions that will directly affect health. For example, general health indicators like birth, death, morbidity, mortality. Okay, morbidity is just the unhealthness in the community, mortality, the deaths being recorded. And then this can include maternal and child health care, family planning, midwifery services, child care, immunization status of children. Okay, also you look at the food and nutrition. These are things which directly affect the health of a community. Daily food budget, um, daily food intake, knowledge of basic food groups. Do people know about carbohydrates, proteins? Because you might find people only eat carbohydrates every time there's no balance, and that by itself can be a problem to health. You also look at illness and injury, types of sickness, medical personnel attending to the sick, where the sick go for consultation and treatment. Do they go to medical doctors or they go to which doctors? Types and sources of medicine. Okay, dental care, mental health accidents, and some causes of death. So those are some things you want to look at. You want also to look at water environment, water supply and storage, food storage, sanitation, okay, garbage, waste, waste water disposal. 
all these things will affect health directly. Also, want to look at endemic diseases. An endemic disease is a disease outbreak, okay, which is consistently present but is limited to a particular region. You also look at essential drugs and health education. Because if the community doesn't have essential drugs, it means that even when there's an outbreak of this disease or this disease which is common is there, people will not be able to be given and so to continue to become worse. You also look at health resources. Okay, where do you get let's say some finances to cater for health in the community? Is it from the government or from the private sector? You look at health mind power. Do you have uh, let's say do you have health practitioners enough to that community? What are the health services? What are the health centers in that community? Also look at the perception of health problems to, to the community, okay? Perceived health problems and also solutions to health problems in such a community. The other thing now that you consider is the collection or organization of data and there are two types of data that may be generated. So you can generate numerical data or you can generate descriptive data. Numerical data this is data that can be counted. And descriptive data is basically a description of observations, characteristics of different factors. So before collation is done, the accomplished questionnaires are going to be edited. Remember first you started with planning. After you planned, now you went into implementing your plan. In implementing the plan, you want to know the actual data, uh, the actual data gathering. How are you going to gather the actual data? We said you can use community dimensions secondary related to health or community dimensions directly related to health. And then the other thing that you look at is now collection of data in implement, implementation of your community diagnosis. Okay. So when you have collected your data, you can collect it in terms of number. For example, malaria, how many people are sick in this community, this number. How many people are affected, this number, just like that. And descriptive, where you describe now observations. When you've collected your data, now you are going to edit it. Okay. Editing is going through the questionnaire to ensure that all the questions have been properly entered. For example, you can put NR meaning no response, NA not applicable and such things. To facilitate data collection, clinic health nurses must develop questionnaire with categories for the classification of the response, making sure that the categories are. So you need to make sure that when you are collecting this data, the categories must be mutually exclusive where choices do not overlap. Okay, for example, you ask a question that is going to be direct, and let's say, for example, a yes or a no, such that there's not going to be overlap of choices. And then also exhaustive or exhaustive categories. In these exhaustive categories, what you are looking at are Categories that are going to anticipate all possible answers that a respondent can give. It's different from mutually exclusive because mutually exclusive you are talking about only choices which do not overlap. But exhausted categories or exhaustive categories, these are categories which will make sure that they cover all possible answers that you can give. Yes, no, maybe. So for the exhaustive category, you have got for fixed response and then open-ended. Fixed response questions, choices must be provided to serve as category for the respondent. For example, you ask a question and then you give possible options that you want to find out. Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? And then the open-ended questions do not provide choice or categories and the answer may be given freely. So here the respondent can give the answer that they so wish. Maybe no, yes, or they can actually even explain. So the next step now will be to summarize the data that you have collected. After you get to summarize that data, now you are going to do a manual tallying or counting. 
for small amounts of data. Computer tiring can be done for huge amounts of data in that case. Responses should be given codes before they can be entered into a data analysis program in a computer. The next thing that you do now is that you present or organize data. Data collected may be presented as statistical tables, graphs, or descriptive data. For example, you can talk about geographical data, history of village, health beliefs. You also now analyze the data. So this is going to aim to establish trends and patterns in terms of health needs and problems of the community. It's also going to allow comparisons of obtained data with the standard values. This is the data that you've obtained. It's showing that this disease is not affecting this community very much. But what are the standard values from what was gathered some time back? Is it true that this disease does not affect this community very much? Or maybe there might be something that is wrong. So that is basically you have already gotten your data, but you are trying to analyze it. You've made your plan. You have now implemented your plan. You've presented your data and analyzed it. Then you are going to identify the community health nursing problems. So I'm going to make a list of the health problems and you can categorize them. You can say, for example, health problems, you talk about them in terms of increased or decreased morbidity, the unhealthness or mortality or fertility. For example, you can say 20% of the young in schools have got, say, malaria. Okay, so that is you are presenting your data and categorizing it. You can also talk about health resource problems and you can describe them as lack or absence of manpower, money, materials, or institutions. For example, you can say 20% of that hospital does not, or let's say 20% of the community lacks, let's say, proper health care materials. Or let's say 20% of the community does not have money to cater for this condition. Okay. You can also talk about health-related problems. They may be described in terms of existing, of social, economic, environmental, and political factors that come together or aggravate the illness and that induces situation in the community. For example, you can say 30% of the households dump their garbage in the river. So just that means that that 30 percent will really affect the community because their activity is affecting the environment. Okay, so this is how you can be able to categorize your data. The next thing that you can do now is to set priority setting for of community health nursing. So problems make use of the following criteria: nature of the problem presented. The problems can be classified by the uh, community health nurses as health status, health resources, or health-related problems. There are some problems that affect the status of the health. There are some problems which not just affect but can be as a result or others can affect or be a result of health resources. You don't have enough money. That is why this problem is there in the community. Other problems, you can just say health-related problems. Okay. So we also talk about the magnitude of the problem. This is going to refer to the severity of the problem, which can be measured in terms of the proportion of the population affected. So after you have collected your data, you can say this problem is very much in this community. Now, after you've done that, you are going to also talk about modifiability of the problem. This is going to refer to the probability of reducing, controlling, or eradicating the problem. Remember, you have identified your problems. You have identified if they're health-related, if they're related to health resources, or they are just basically related to the health status. And then you have also talked about their magnitude, how big the problems are, and how much population they have affected. Now talk about, are they able to be reduced? Can they be eradicated? Can this health problem be controlled? After then, you talk about preventive potential. 
And this is going to talk about the probability of controlling or reducing the effects which are posed by that problem that you have identified. The last thing that you talk about is the social concern. You're going to talk about the pers the perception of the population of the community as they are affected by the problem. What is the problem thinking about? What is the community thinking about that problem? Others might think it's just a lie, it's just something made up. What is the community thinking about that? And then on the last, the other thing that you are going to do is you talk about the scoring system in prioritizing health problems. Okay. What will be the steps in prioritizing problems? So score each problem according to each criteria. Divide score by the highest possible score. Multiply the answer by the weight of the criteria. Add the final score for each criterion to get the total score of the problem. The highest possible score is 10, while the lowest possible is like a 1. Okay. So the problem with the highest total score is given highest priority by the nurses. So what we are just talking about here is that you have identified in this community you have got a lot of possible problems. There is malaria, there is cancer, there is this. But then you want to identify which problem has got the highest score. In other words, of all those problems, which one is the one of highest concern at the moment? Okay, so the problem that you find out to be the one with the highest concern is the one that you are going to prioritize. For example, currently, of course, we've been having people with cancer, people with HIV, people with different diseases. But because there is cholera currently, the concentration and the priority is on handling people with cholera because it's the condition of highest priority at the moment. Now, after you've gathered all your information, the final thing that you are going to do is that you are going to write a clear and summarize the report of what you have done, all right, of everything that you have talked about, the conditions you have identified, how you can eradicate them, what has been the causes and everything else. You can also suggest solutions to the problems that you have identified, and that is going to be a good community diagnosis.